very first of all my apologies to everyone for being late so apologies for that uh, second apology for uh, what I can see uh, you have been forced to being alive on the Saturday morning so my apologies for that as well uh, okay so the uh, body that I'm representing over here young Indians I'm a part of young Indians and my colleague Ankush is uh, also part of the young Indians so what we do in young Indians is let me make it very uh, brief very short and let us uh, make it very uh, interactive what it entails for you so we as a uh, body are part of uh, CII, Confederation of Indian Industries and uh, what is something unique about the Young Indians is as the name kind of a suggest that uh, we are people who are less than 45 years of age. So uh, what we do apart from CII, we uh, towards the nation building, we uh, do certain projects we have a policy making, we have advocacy. So these are the two, three uh, basic parameters that we take care of. Now Young Indians itself is based on the four pillar, which are four stumbh. Hai. Uh, so we are based on that. What are those four main pillar? One is members, people like us, me, Ankush and my other colleagues as well. Uh, second pillar is Yuva. Yuva is uh, you people. Now the name of this stakeholder or this pillar itself is Yuva and it actually is talking about Yuva as well. Then the third pillar that I am talking about is Thalir which is the school children. Now Thalir is how many people are from Tamil Nadu? Okay, can you please explain about Thalir? Okay, no issues. So <laughs> Thalir is basically we got the name out of uh, uh, Tamil itself. So that's uh, what it entails. So Thalir is about all school children. So uh, and the fourth one that I am talking about is rural, rural initiative. So all these four stakeholders group together take care of a certain projects. Now what is it that is uh, something of a point of interest for you as a Yuva? Uh, during our course of academics, during our course of uh, learning, uh, we acquire quite a huge amount of knowledge, huge or lesser, whatever that uh, comes later on, that uh, comparison, but we acquire a certain amount of knowledge. However, uh, if I talk about uh, uh, knowledge, uh, as one of my guru told me, if knowledge not being executed becomes toxic. So what it means is, by the time we are out there in the industry, we have a knowledge, but we have a faint idea. We don't even have a, or rather I should say, we don't even have a faint idea how that knowledge is going to actually work. So what this opportunity provides to you is that you should be able to do the projects in partnership with us. That is the industry. Let us define ourselves as an industry. And then due to this regular interaction, communication, you would be in a position to know, at least be aware of a little bit where exactly you are standing as of now. What it also entails is you, while taking those certain projects forward, there are going to be certain level of leadership skills that you would be acquiring, which is what is ultimately we are expecting this place uh, particularly when we are talking about reshihood leadership is what uh, we are talking about and that's the emphasis which i have seen in the uh, not only in the academia but also from sahil uh, and other people that's what uh, it happens so uh, what are the other projects that we take care of uh, very simple let's say climate change jalvayu parivartan that we are talking about so in climate change, we talk about not, uh, we are not trying to bring in the revolutionary ideas. We are only talking about incremental change. Just by, for instance, how many people are aware of that, uh, the faucets which are there in the wash basin. So there was a initiative almost a year back to reduce the flow of the water. How many people are aware of that? Okay, so we carried out that uh, inventive over here itself so that there is a less consumption of water while you are washing your hands 
Miyawaki Forest. How many people were part of that uh, group? Almost a year back, I can see some familiar faces actually. Yes. So that Miyawaki Forest, that was out of that climate change initiative itself. So these are the kind of a small ideas which when being implemented can make a bit of a difference towards the way we are addressing those challenges. Uh, then I'm talking about health. Health is uh, one such thing, although quite a lot talked about, but uh, the most ignored as well. Uh, there are certain reasons why due to our age, we have that kind of a luxury to ignore it altogether. It is not creating any kind of impact for us as of now. But once it comes in our discipline, uh, then it creates a profounding impact for our future uh, career growth as well. The reason being is, if your body is not going to be healthy enough, your mind is also not going to be healthy enough. OSD, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, CS, uh, computer, C, uh, computer I syndrome, CES. How many people are aware of CES? Computer I syndrome. Okay, how many people are aware of COVID? So COVID was a declared pandemic. Let me put it this way. It was declared by World Health Organization as a pandemic. Computerized syndrome is an undeclared pandemic. What is this pandemic? The pandemic is if you would have observed the people who have to opt for the specs or the glasses, the population has increased like anything. Why? Because of the constant stare at the monitors or the mobile phones or the e-gadget. So what happens is, while you are continuously staring at that, your blinking rate, which is what actually moistens your eyes, your blinking rate reduces a lot. So let's say if that on an average is 10 or 11 seconds. So while looking at the mobile or a tab or a monitor screen, it increases to 30, 40 seconds. So the dryness of the uh, eyes come into the picture and due to which the blurriness in the vision starts taking place. And that's the reason why you have to go for the specs. That's an undeclared pandemic. So we, so I'm just giving an example. So these are the kind of uh, initiatives, these are kind of uh, inventives that uh, we want to see that uh, those initiatives should be coming from your side. This is where it's going to make a difference. Uh, Masoom, although Masoom is not something which is going to be relevant uh, as of now for your college, Masoom is about good touch, bad touch, promoting of that. Quite a lot of times, although even in our workplaces itself, neither the male gender, neither the female gender, they are both not aware of what exactly is a good touch or a bad touch. It is a reality. So when you are going to be out there in the corporate world, you will actually observe that. Sometimes people will come for those kind of a complaint and you will be like, ye achha, okay. And it is going to be a surprise for everyone. So, uh, although this is not something which uh, we are having in Yuva, but uh, this is also one of the things that we do with Salar. Then we are talking about road safety. But uh, let's say if I am talking about uh, uh, Great Nevada, wherein we are having a types with other colleges. What we observe over there is there is a kind of a very zeal and intensity, a kind of a, a, I should say, a testosterone driving behavior for driving a vehicle in a particular way. And you can see the skid marks on the road in the front of the college itself. For Greater Noida, I wonder how many people are there or not. Greater Noida, ke aage ki sadak ki jo dekhenge, colleges ki sadak dekhenge, they have the skid marks and that's what they, the people are doing. Now for whatever reasons it's been done, which is fine, but that's another ignored aspect. We don't even know uh, the profounding impact, even a single mistake, what a road safety issue can bring to the family, leave alone you, it is going to be catastrophic for the family itself. So we talk about road safety and then uh, uh, 
innovation, entrepreneurship, uh, two intertwined uh, uh, verticals that we are talking about. Innovation is something, let's say, if uh, you're talking about road safety, bringing some innovation and in how to bring a safety aspect in a road safety, or let's say, if I talk about certain aspect in a health sector, how to bring about uh, a small, uh, just a small innovation, incremental innovation, nothing, something revolutionary, a small bit of innovation. And then uh, learning and entrepreneurship. This, uh, for instance, this event could be classified as a learning event. Could be classified, although it's not a learning event, but could be classified as a learning event because there is going to be an exchange of idea that is going to take place. If you are going to have an industrial visit to somewhere and you come up with a project that we want to have an industrial visit to one of the say, rice processing plant or a sugar processing plant, then you can come up with a project and we will see, we will explore how we can connect with our members, not only from Young Indians but from CIA and make a visit to that plant. So those are the things that could be done. Entrepreneurship is nothing but a simply just doing a little bit more than what is required. <coughs> In simplest of the simplest word, that's what the entrepreneurship is. As a matter of fact, all of you are entrepreneurs. When being faced with a certain situation, you suddenly become an entrepreneur. Although knowingly or unknowingly, it happens. But you suddenly become an entrepreneur, doing slightly more than what is required. And if you do it constantly, then you can classify yourself as an entrepreneur. That's what happens. So it's as simple as that. So uh, entrepreneurship is again one vertical that uh, we support. So we talk about startups, we talk about uh, techs, uh, we talk about innovation. So that's what uh, we are talking about. So in totality, we are having seven verticals, uh, health, innovation, climate change, learning, entrepreneurship. Uh, then we have, let me cross check, climate accessibility and uh, accessibility and road safety. Accessibility is uh, how many people, uh, autism, I wonder if that would be classified as a accessibility or not. How many people are uh, aware of the challenges that we face in the accessibility? Okay. What is accessibility? Any crazy idea? Any wild guess? So accessibility is all about having the workplace and the environment accessible to the people who are classified as divyang okay uh, many of the times it is the most ignored aspect and uh, uh, i would say uh, ignored not that consciously it is ignored but it is ignored because the people are not somehow not coming in the mainframe of the industry or of our environment they are already at such a mental block they are in such a regressive state they don't want to come out since they are not coming out that's the reason why we are not observing the difficulties or the challenges that we are facing that they are facing so that is what the accessibility is about. As a matter of fact, in Thalar, we are having a, a tie-up with uh, one of the school, which is called as Asha Deep. It is about school for deaf and dumb. So uh, if in future, uh, if uh, you people permit, then maybe we will be having a session with them or those children. And uh, so we will understand a bit of a sign language as well, uh, which makes it actually very interesting the way uh, the sign languages and everything takes place. So that's what uh, we talk about. So now what is going to happen is there is going to be a student Yuva Council. That Yuva Council is good. So there is going to be a chair for the entire. So Yuva Council, chair and co-chair. And then there is going to be chair for each of the vertical. And co-chair for each of the vertical. And through them, 
that's how the projects are going to be coming forward so the agenda is going to be set by you driven by you suggested by you our role as a part of the industry is only and only going to be to support your initiative you need a resource we will provide it you need a visit industrial visit factory visit you want a subject matter expert although that's a word i learned uh, a week ago it's not the right word but uh, you want a uh, subject matter expert we'll bring in uh, as a matter of fact uh, uh, so there is one uh, in the, we are soon going to organize a growth summit in your uh, institute uh, which is all about upskilling and learning one of the aspect that uh, we are going to cover is which my colleague ankush is also going to cover is is a financial investment unfortunately it is never taught in our school curriculum or the college curriculum due to whatever reasons it is the most simplistic thing that anyone can do and the most ignored and like for instance uh, although not holding up that kind of example uh, how many people know that merely by investing 500 rupees for 10 years it can reach to maybe something like a 10 lakh as well you are aware of that okay great how many people are having a demat account oh salute to all you I wonder your family would be calling you crazy or not, but <laughs> that's a good thing. Okay, so so I see already quite a lot of awareness over there. So uh, so I think that's going to be a good audience for you to interact. So uh, with this, I would like to take uh, uh, your questions, uh, if there is any about uh, any such kind of inventive, and we would be pleased to answer it. if you want to ask why saturday so i will i am willing to answer that as well okay so with this i take a permission from you thanks so much thanks for being a such a patient audience and i can see the exuberance and the chirpiness been floating around the room thanks so much